Hi, and welcome to our video for Chapter 3, Section 3, Conversion Problems. Actually, kind of a chapter that I kind of dig, but a lot of time, students, not so much. But if you take your time and you're careful and practice, it actually gets kind of easy. And not only is it necessary for the rest of the course, but can be very useful in many other areas. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is a conversion factor. It's an important concept, but not necessarily an important word definition or the like to memorize. What it is, it's a ratio of equivalent measurements. For example, right, you should know by now that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So the conversion factor anytime you have to convert kilograms to grams or the other way around, would be one kilogram over 1,000 grams. Or, because the ratio can go either way, or 1,000 grams over one kilogram. There are other examples. You could say uh, how many days in a week, right? So one week equals seven days. So the conversion factor from days to week would be one week over seven days. Or it can be the other way around. I could just have easily have written seven days over one week, right? You know, 60 seconds in one minute. So one minute over 60 seconds or vice versa. These would each be conversion factors. Okay. So our next thing, we're going to use these conversion factors in something called dimensional analysis, which is a way to analyze and solve problems by using their units. Okay, and that's one of the main reasons why units are so important is that if you don't have the units available, you won't be able to do a lot of these problems you need to do. So, let's take an example of how many seconds are in an eight-hour work day. Okay, but I'm not going to do the actual math with numbers. I'm just going to do the dimensional analysis. All right? So, if I have eight hours, all right, and I want to figure out eventually how many seconds... So I'm going to go over here, equals some number of seconds. Well, how do I go from hours to seconds? So I know how many seconds in an hour? Well, I kind of do, but not everybody does. I only know because I'm a nerd. So, but I know how many minutes are in an hour. So I'll have to do something with the number of minutes to the number of hours. Then I'll have to do something with the number of seconds to the number of of minutes. Figuring out these is my dimensional analysis. Because when I do my math, right, since hours is on the top and hours is on the bottom, they'll end up canceling out. Since minute is on the top and minute is on the bottom, they'll end up canceling out. And the only unit I'm left with is seconds, and that's going to be the unit for my answer. Alright, so some more examples. How many minutes are in one week? So I have one week. Uh, well, I don't know how many minutes in a week, but I know how many days in a week. So days in a week. I don't know how many minutes are in a day, but I don't know how many hours in a day. And now I know how many minutes are in one hour. So there's Seven days in one week, 24 hours in one day, 60 minutes in one hour. Let's double check. Week, oh, day cancels, hours cancel, and I'm left with 1 times 24 times 60 divided by 7, then divided by 1 and 1, so divided by 7 is going to equal, if you feel free to plug it into your calculator, some number of minutes. All right. How many seconds are in a 40-hour work week? 
well, I'm starting with 40 hours. Missed my O. 40 hours. And I need how many seconds? Some number of seconds. Well, I don't know how many seconds are in an hour, but I know how many minutes are in an hour. And I know how many seconds are in a minute. So let's see, 60 minutes in one hour, 60 seconds in one minute. My hours cancel, my minutes cancel, and I'm left with 40 times 60 times 60 seconds. All right. Another thing I'm going to have to do is convert between units, and it's very easily solved using dimensional analysis. Let's say a lab experiment requires 7.5 decigrams of magnesium per student for 100 students. How many grams of magnesium are needed? All right, so we have 7.5 decigrams. So 7.5 decigrams per student times 100 students is going to equal 7.5 times 100, so that's 750 decigrams of magnesium. Okay, but my answer has to be in grams of magnesium. So I have to say 750 decigrams. And here's going to be a very important phrase that I'm going to do more in class than I am going to do on here. But the phrase is called what you want over what you got. Okay, now 750 decigrams and I want grams. So it's going to be how many grams to how many decigrams. Okay. What you want grams over what you got decigrams. And there's 10 decigrams in one gram. So I put 10 decigrams to one gram. And now when I do my math, my decigrams cancel. And I get 750 divided by 10 or 75 grams. So it's going to be tough to see because all my writing in the way, but it says convert 4.6 milligrams to grams. So I have 4.6 milligrams over here. I'm going to have to give a certain number of grams. So what I want is grams. So I'm going to multiply this by grams over what I got is milligrams. And there's a thousand milligrams in one gram. So I'm going to get 4.6 over 1,000. Easiest way to do this if I say 4, 6, right? My decimal is here. I have to go 1, 2, 3, because of 1, 2, 3 zeros. You know, three spots to the left, so it's 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to get 0. 0 0.0046 grams. Now right, let's do a couple more of these because you really need to practice these a lot. All right, so 15 cubic centimeters to liters. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, well, let's first set it up. 15 centimeters cube. I'm gonna put it all the way over here so we have plenty of space if we need it. It's gonna be a certain number of liters. Well, do you know how many cubic centimeters are in a liter? Well, sort of, but remember you learned that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So we know that ratio, and we know how many milliliters in a liter, right? So 1,000 milliliters in one liter. All right, so first step will be converting this to milliliters. So we're going to multiply it by what you want, which is milliliters, over what you got, which is cubic centimeters. Okay? And that's one to one. 
Now, when they cancel, we're left with milliliters. So we want liters. We got milliliters. And there's one liter and a thousand milliliters. So the one over a thousand on milliliters cancel. And we're going to get 15 divided by 1,000, which is going to be 0 0.015 liters. Ah, let's do another one. Yeah, I know you're dying to do another one. All right. 94.5 grams to micrograms. Now, this is only going to be one step, so this is a nice easy one. 94.5 grams is going to be equal to a certain number of micrograms. Well, let's see. One thousand. Nope. There we go. One hundred thousand or ten times. One times ten to the negative six micrograms is equal to one gram. So what do we do here? We want micrograms. We have grams, one gram. This is one times 10 to the negative sixth micrograms. Our grams cancel. And I'm going to get my handy dandy calculator out and punch in 94.5 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative sixth. And that's going to give me, I'm going to write it underneath because I didn't leave myself enough space, 9.45 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is the same as 0 0.0000094. That's when I wrote it as 9.45 times 10 to the negative, and I went up. I was counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that told me negative 5. All right, so sometimes, like you saw there, you'll need more than one conversion factor. And we already did a couple like that, but we'll do a couple more. So let's say we're doing 0 0.073 centimeters. 0 0.073 centimeters, and we have to do how many micrometers? Okay. Well, we don't know how many centimeters are directly in a micrometer, also called a micron. So if I say micron, I mean micrometer. But we don't have any centimeters or in a meter. So what we want? Meters over centimeter over what you got, what you want, or what you got. 1 meter to 100 centimeters, okay? And then these will end up canceling. So now what we want is microns over what you got, which is meter. And that's 1 times 10 to the negative 6 microns in 1 meter. So when we do, those will cancel our meters, and we're left with just microns. Awesome. And we do 0 0.073 and 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So we could say 7.3 times 10 to the negative 2 times 1 times 10 to the negative 6 is equal to 7.3 times 10 to the negative 8. All right, do a couple more. I really need to practice a lot of these. Convert 45.4 centimeters to miles. All right, so we have 45.4 centimeters, and we want to know how many miles. All right, well, we can't do centimeters directly to miles, but we know centimeters to meters. We can do meters to kilometers and we can do kilometers to miles. Right, so there's one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. One kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters, which is 
well, I'll say one kilometer is also equal to about 0 0.6 miles. So centimeters to meters. So what you want now is meters over what you got, which is centimeters. And there's 100 centimeters in one meter. And now we're going to have meters. We want now to change that to kilometers. And there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. Ah, I'm running out of space. And we know we want now miles over what we got, which is kilometers. And there's 0 0.6 miles, so we write 0 0.6 next to miles in one kilometer. All right, so centimeters cancel. Meters cancel. And kilometers cancel. And when I plug all of those into my handy dandy calculator, I'll say 45.4 divided by 100. Take that answer, divide it by 1,000, and take that and multiply it times 0.6. And I end up with 0 0.0002724 miles. Let's think significant figures. These are all exact, kind of like integers, okay? So their significant figures don't matter. However, this was pretty much an approximation. So I can really only have one significant figure in my answer, even though I had three here. So this would be equal to 0 0.000, and I'll have to round this to three miles. What's that you say? Can we please do some more? Oh, by all means, I'd be happy to. All right, let's convert 0 0.8 grams to tons. This is kind of seeming familiar based on something we did in class a while back. Okay, 0.8. 8 grams is going to equal a certain number of tons. Well, what do we know? Do we know how many grams in a ton? No. But we know how many grams in a kilogram. Right? 1,000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram. We know that 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. And we know that there are 2 1,000 pounds is equal to 1 ton. So we can do grams to kilogram, what we want. Kilograms over grams. 1,000 grams to 1 kilogram. So then we'll have kilograms, so grams will cancel. And we know kilograms to pounds, so we want pounds. And there's 2.2 pounds to 1 kilogram. That will help cancel our kilograms. And finally, ton, what you want, tons per pounds, and there's 2,000 pounds in a ton. So we'll end up with 0 0.8 times 2.2 divided by 1,000, and that answer divided by 2,000 tons. Go ahead and plug that in your calculator and come up with an answer, and we'll talk about that in class. All right, I'm going to set up, but I'm not going to do all the math for you again, the seconds to years. So let's do 45.4 seconds. Let's say you could hold your breath for 45.4 seconds. What would that be in years? All right, these are a little silly, but they're really good practice at doing this. So we know that there's 60 seconds in one minute, that there's 60 minutes in one minute hour, 24 hours in one day, and 365 days in one year. So we can do seconds to minute. So we're going to multiply do minute. How many minutes per second? Multiply that times we know minutes per hour. So now we want hours over minute. We know how many hours in a day, but we want day. We got hour. 
running out of space. And we know how many days are in a year. Well, we want years over how many days. All right. See if you hit pause and see if you can go ahead and fill all of these in. All right. I'm hoping you actually did hit pause and tried to fill them in. So let's see how you did. All right. So in one minute, there's 60 seconds. One hour, there's 60 minutes. One day, there's 24 hours times one year is 365 days. So you can plug this into your calculator if you wish. 45.4 seconds divided by 60. That answer divided by 60. So I'm going to cancel. That answer divided by 24. And that answer divided by 365. So it's going to be something really small, zero point. Zero, 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 maybe another zero or so, something years. Go ahead and plug that in the calculator if you wish and come up with your answer.